In this lesson, we're going to carry on learning about sketching in Fusion 360. Thanks for tuning back in, guys, and today we are going to dive back into our Design 1, and we want to learn more about sketching before we start creating solid geometry. So, at this point, you should have your design open. If you don't, then make sure you go into your data panel and simply double click on it. That'll open it in the canvas for you. From here, we're going to make sure that we expand our sketches folder and note that we have sketch one and there's a small lock icon next to it. This is telling us that the sketch is fully defined. We can turn it on or off, the visibility I mean, and we can minimize this folder if we need to. We can right click on this, we can edit the sketch, we can redefine the sketch plane. If we decide that it needs to be on the front or the right plane, we can do that here. We can also right click on it in the timeline and edit the sketch. We can double click on it in the timeline or we can edit it on the screen. I'm gonna double click on it in the timeline and this will bring us back into a normal or look at mode and this will allow us to edit any geometry. It's also important to note that if we right click on a sketch when we're outside of the sketch edit, we'll be able to do things like turn on and off the profiles, hide and show dimensions, and we can even make changes to it outside of there. So if we finish the sketch and take a look at our right click menu, notice that a few other things have popped up. If we select show dimensions, we can double click on these on the screen and we can modify them. For example, make this 250, make this 100, and now we've modified that sketch without going back into it. So again, this is good practice. We can right click, we can hide the dimensions, and we can just take a look at that sketch. Once again, we'll double click on it in the timeline and we'll begin to modify it. So I wanna make a simple design because we're taking a look at a few things throughout this design series. We wanna learn the basics of creating a part creating components to make an assembly and take a look at mechanical motion. But we also want to talk about things like making a simulation study and also making a CNC program to manufacture or machine this part. These are all major influencers in the design process. So again, we're looking at a very basic design. We're not looking at making anything too complicated, but we want to make sure that we explore some of the tools. So right now we have a rectangle that's 100 by 250 millimeters. We have a circle in the center that's 50 millimeters. I'm going to use the modify offset tool to make an offset of this circle. Again, you can use a drop down and note that we have a shortcut key, the letter O. Again, I'm not going to be using those as just sort of a rule. So we're going to select offset, grab this, and then we have a manipulator on the screen. This allows us to manually drag this inside or out. Notice that the dimensions go negative on the inside and positive on the outside. We have options to select multiple curves or chain the selection. We're dealing with one sketch element here, so it doesn't really change what we're doing. And then we can manually enter the value of the dimension. I'm going to set this equal to 10 millimeters and hit enter. So now what we've done is we have a diameter of 50 millimeters and we have an offset of 10 millimeters. If we wanted to apply a dimension to this, let's say sketch dimension and grab this, notice that it allows us to apply that 70 millimeters, but if I click, it tells me that this will over constrain the sketch. This means that there are too many dimensions here. It just doesn't need them all. If we select okay, it'll create what's called a driven dimension. Driven dimensions can be used if you want to just understand the size of something, but you don't need to drive it by that dimension. So in this case, for example, let's say that we want to figure out what the value is going to be if we make this 42.5. Well, we're dealing with nice round numbers. We're adding 10 to the diameter. So you can see that this gives us 62.5. Or rather, I should say we're adding 10 to the radius because we're doing an offset. So I'm going to take this back up to 50. We're adding 10, so we get 70 millimeters. If we wanted it to be 75, we could change that offset value to 12.5. And again, we're adding that to the radius. Now we have a 75 millimeter OD and a 50 millimeter ID. So far, everything's looking pretty good. 
there are several other sketch tools that we could uh, have in here that we could work with, but I really want to focus on adding some lines and then working with what's called a constraint. We've looked at adding dimensions so far, but on the screen there are a lot of little icons that are automatically applied when we use things like a rectangle or a polygon. When we use these things, we're getting different constraints automatically applied. This one here is what's called a horizontal constraint. When we select it in the bottom right hand corner, it tells you exactly what it is. This one here is going to be parallel. And when we select it, you'll notice that it selects the parallel pair. So we have parallel here and here. If we select this one, we have parallel here and here. And we have a perpendicular constraint in the corner. And then we have this offset that was applied when we used our sketch offset feature. So all of these have been applied and there's one that we can't really see that's applied at the center and that sketch point is coincident with the origin. So if we wanted to manually apply these, we could start sketching and for example, I'm going to start sketching a line out to the side and as I get close to something, in this case parallel, and it's going to be parallel with this line here, it's doing what's called a persistent constraint. So if I click here, it'll apply that constraint for me. So I'm going to left click and it applies that constraint for me. And if I start to drag up, you can see that it's applying a perpendicular constraint, but it's applying it with this horizontal line. So if I don't want it to apply that, I can hold down the control key and temporarily override that persistent constraint. Unfortunately, there's no other way for me to do that without using a shortcut key. So we're just going to hold down the control key and then I can override that persistent constraint. And I'm going to draw this out to the right and then left click. And then I'm going to say OK. So we're still on our line tool. I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard to turn my line tool off. And now I can grab the endpoint of this line and I can drag it in and out because we don't have a dimension but I do have a parallel constraint that's driving its direction. We're going to take a look at the application of constraints. There's a drop down here that tells you what each of these is. Horizontal, vertical, coincident, a tangent, an equal, parallel, perpendicular, lock or fix. We have a midpoint, we have a concentric, collinear, a symmetry, and then we have this curvature option. So all of the constraints are in this dropdown are also across the top here. And in a sort of addition to that, if we select something and right click, any available constraints that can be applied, fix, unfix, horizontal, vertical, or delete, those are going to be shown here. If I control select a second line and right click, now we've got a few more. We can make a midpoint or collinear, parallel. These are all things that happen based on the selection that we have. What we want to do is we want to take a look at how we can apply these. It can be done by selecting first and then selecting the constraint, or we can pre-decide that we want, for example, a parallel constraint. We can select the line entities, and then it'll apply it for us. We can also say an equal constraint, for example, and this line is still the one that we're focusing on. We're going to select those, and now they're both equal lengths. If you've changed the user preferences for how you pan and rotate, then you have to figure out what those options are based on your selection. If you've left it at Fusion, then if you press in your mouse wheel, you'll be able to pan. If you don't have a mouse wheel that is a button function or a third mouse button like on a um, 3D Connections CAD mouse, then you can use the options at the bottom. You can select pan and then just use the left mouse button and then you can hit escape to get off that tool. And I'm going to hit escape to get off the equal constraint. I want to apply a dimension. So again, D on the keyboard or select sketch dimension. And then I'm going to select this line. Now, as we drag away from this line, because the dimension tool is all encompassing, we can have a vertical dimension, horizontal dimension, or what's called an aligned dimension. Now, oftentimes this can be pretty tricky because maybe we don't want the dimension this close. We want it farther out, but we do want it to be aligned. Again, that's where that right click menu comes in handy because it'll give you all the available options based on what you're doing. So in this case, I want to say aligned dimension. So now it doesn't matter where I put my cursor. It can be left or right, up or down. 
it's going to keep with this aligned dimension. I left click to place and then manually enter a value, in this case 150 millimeters. So now the endpoints and the lines themselves have changed to black. I'm going to hit escape to get off my dimension tool. These are now fully defined. You might realize that these sketch elements really make no sense for the design that we have, just extra lines that I wanted to draw to make sure we understood the process. I want to keep them in here because they were important parts of the process, so I'm going to select them. I'm going to change them to construction. This means that they can't be selected to create any geometry. I can't create a surface or a solid from them. So now we have the base of our sketch. We've taken a look at some of the basics here. We've looked at creating a line, a rectangle, and a circle. We've used our dimension tool. We've used offset. We've also taken a look at the application of constraints. Some of the things that we haven't touched on yet are insert, in which we can put a canvas image behind the design that we're working with. That can be extremely helpful whenever you're working with a concept, if you have a hand sketch or even a digital image that you want to try to replicate. We're going to get to that in other design series. It's not really important at this point. We also didn't talk about the selection options. We have selection tools, we have priority, and we have filters. And again, this is going to be dependent upon where you are. Right now, we don't have any solid geometry. We don't have any bodies or faces, so none of this stuff really applies. But notice that we can do things like turn on and off decals, canvas, custom graphics, and so on. From here, we're just about ready to turn this into a solid body. So let's go ahead and finish the sketch that we've just created, and let's make sure that we save our design. One thing that's interesting about Fusion 360, because all of our files are saved on the cloud, it asks us for a version description. Now we don't necessarily have to enter anything, user saved is perfectly fine, but if we want to go ahead and just say sketch one and say OK, if we expand our data panel and we take a look at this design, it says V2 underneath it, and the name at the top says Design 1 V2. If we drop this down, we can take a look at any version that we've saved. So you can see the first one is Item Created. The second one is Sketch 1. That was the definition that I put in there. Again, we don't have to put anything. It's perfectly fine to leave it empty. We also have the option to create a milestone. If we make a big design decision and we want to make sure that we understand that, we can set it as a milestone. You can do this after the fact by selecting these three buttons and say create milestone. And we can also say open. So at any time, we can take a look at any older version, we can open it as a read-only document, or we can promote it to be the most current. For example, if I select open, it's going to open up version one of this design before we added those extra sketch lines or change the dimensions. And we've got version two, our most current version. You'll notice that this one is locked. If we wanted to, we could use our file dropdown and say save as. So we can say design one original, for example, and we can save it as its own design. So now inside of our data panel, we have design one, which has two versions, and we have our design one original, which was that point at the original version. So for some reason, if you want to have multiple points at which you branch off to different designs, this is a workflow that you can adopt. Keep in mind that when we use Save As, there is no link between the two files. If we make changes to the Design 1 original, it's not going to affect this one. So for continuity to make sure that we don't get too confused, I'm going to right click on Design 1 original. Notice that we have loads of options in here, and again, we'll talk about these as they become applicable, but I'm going to delete it. I'm going to say yes and get rid of it. Also keep in mind that there are other functionalities available to us, such as view details on web. Again, we'll talk about it later. And we'll also talk about the fact that Fusion does have CAD in a web browser. So it's the same file. We have limited functionality, but we can do sketches and features inside of uh, any web browser. We also have options for uses, used in, and any drawings. As we begin to make what's called a distributed design, where we use a design inside of another, or if we make a detailed drawing. Those are going to be links that we want to make sure we understand and we manage. So we can use the options inside of the data panel to see all the files where things are used or linked between each other. 
This can also be done on the web. And again, we'll talk about those as they really become important to us. Right now, I just want to make sure that we focus on this stuff. And the reason that I'm pointing these out is because most people like to explore and click on all these buttons. So I want to make sure you understand what they are and what they do to give you enough information to make those decisions as, as to what you're clicking on, what you're doing, what you're changing. From this point, we are done with the basics of sketching. There are, are loads more topics that we could talk about, such as linking dimensions or creating user parameters or getting into more sketch features like adding fillets or more advanced things like splines and conics. Those are going to be reserved for design series where they really make sense. Again, we're really focusing on the application of some of these basics. Now, if you're familiar with CAD, uh, or even if you're familiar with Fusion 360, this is probably really slow. This is probably a lot of information that you already know. So if that's the case, you can jump ahead and, and maybe pick up another design series. But if you're just getting into CAD or just getting into Fusion 360, make sure that you follow along because I'm going to build on these basics and make sure that we have a foundation that makes sense. And that way you can apply it to your own designs with confidence. So from here, make sure that you're saved. And in the next lesson, we'll begin to make solid bodies out of what we've done so far.